Good evening and hope you're having a good weekend so far. Uh, I wasn't planning on making any FSD videos tonight. However, uh, I was lucky enough to get FSD 14.1.4 downloaded to my car right before I left for dinner. Um, and so I installed it while I was eating and had about a 40, 45 minute trip home from dinner where I got to test this build out and get some first impressions. So I'm going to cover the good and the bad, but let's start first with the not so good and we go from there. So uh, this first clip here, uh, the car is going to be traversing the Lowry Tunnel. Um, pretty much as soon as we get into the tunnel, the car wants to make a lane change to the left. It flips its turn signal on, but doesn't actually make the move because of the solid white lines. So it seems to respect that enough to not make the lane change, but then the car, you know, still has lip signal on still. So kind of confusing to surrounding drivers. Um, it did eventually go away. Now, it did when it did go away, you'll see here in a sec, the car does one of those phantom swerves, as I call them, where it's swerving around a, a non-existent object or debris or whatever in the road for no apparent reason. The lead vehicle didn't seem to have any issues, so not sure what it saw, nothing that I could discern, um, but it did it nonetheless. And this has been a problem that I recognize several times with 14.1.3, so that behavior unfortunately still looks to be there. Um, just based on this initial drive. All right, in this clip, you're gonna see the Ego car swerve once again. However, the circumstances are a bit different. So rather than swerving for a phantom object in the road, the car decides to follow the lead vehicle here, which suddenly decided to turn off of Summit Avenue, which is the road we're on. And that causes a strong steering input to follow them, and then another strong steering input to course correct. Uh, both incidents definitely startled my wife. Uh, for me, it, I've been testing FSD forever, so it didn't phase me one bit, but definitely noticeable, right? Um, and this sort of behavior needs to get corrected, I think, before version 14 is ready for general availability because the bar has been raised, right? Version 13 has been so, so smooth, and I really never, ever saw this behavior with version 13, especially if 13.2.9. All right, so before we jump over to the good things that I saw in my first drive, I want to cover some of the bad just to review again. So number one is swerving for phantom objects that don't exist. That behavior was present in dot three. It also is present in dot four. Um, the second is swerving because a lead vehicle makes erratic movement. Uh, that was there in dot three. That also looks to be there, unfortunately, in dot four as well. Um, the third item that I saw was just a lot of hesitancy around lane changes, right? Automatic lane changes for whatever reason. One was because there was a solid white line, but it kept the blinker on. You can't have that, right? That's just confusing to all around. I also saw in another circumstance where the car had an open spot, there was a dotted, you know, line in between the lanes. So perfectly able and legal to make a lane change, yet the car kind of hesitated and didn't do it. So those three things, hopefully we'll see some better behavior tomorrow or maybe some of the same, but those are my first impressions and the not so good things. So starting with the good here, uh, the navigation seems to indicate the three rightmost lanes are open and that we can exit I-94 East like we normally do on the Cretan. Uh, however, the reality is all those lanes are shut down because I-94 East shut down for a maintenance program that doesn't complete till Monday. So the car was actually smart enough, as I'll show you in a second, to get all the way over to the left. As soon as it saw uh, a move over sign, uh, one of those flashing yellow signs, um, about a mile or so back. And uh, I think this is the first time where I, I recognized the car was definitely reading the signs. It was definitely taking these things into account because the navigation clearly shows that those lanes are open. So uh, the car was smart enough to discern that's not the case and was able to exit the freeway normally using the detour without hesitating once. So that was pretty cool. So carrying on with the good items that I recognize so far, I have not seen a return of the brake pumping behavior that I saw a ton of in dot three. Um, and that behavior, in case you're new, um, was noticed typically at you know four-way stop intersections when traffic would approach from the sides. Um, and when the vehicle decided it wanted to go, would kind of stab the brake and it would just kind of be a journey experience for anybody on board. So um, that one's not, um, has not cropped back up yet. However, I need to do a lot more driving during the daytime to rule it out for sure. And there's actually some specific intersections where I've experienced it almost every time near me that I will be testing uh, tomorrow. So um, the other thing was the speed profile still seemed to be untouched from before. 
Standard still does a good job of picking the speed. Now, I, I will say for my area here in the Twin Cities, it's a little on the fast side. The reason why I don't go chill is this chill is not aggressive enough to pass slow, like really slow traffic, in my opinion. So I'm hoping Tesla can tune the standard profile, maybe just shave a few miles per hour off of it, just because it goes a little too fast. Anything over nine over here you usually can get you in trouble pretty quick. If you're nine under or below, you're usually safe. So I'm hopeful that the standard speed profile will become that. And if so, it'll be perfect um, once that's done. Um, the other thing too was the um, acceleration, especially under the highway, very strong, but not, you know, overwhelming, very confident. Uh, that is definitely an attribute of dot three that's still there in dot four. So, so with auto park, uh, I have had the return of the driveway parking setting when parking at home that came back with dot three, um, yesterday after being unavailable pretty much the entire week, which is super weird. Um, and ever since then now, even with dot four, my car will park in the driveway. And if I open my garage door, it will try to park inside the garage, but the entrance just seems a little too tight, even though the car perfectly fits. So um, it seems just a bit timid still. So we've made some progress there. I'm not sure what changed with that feature, but that continues to be something that was working well now. Uh, and then starting FSD from park inside my garage, that did not work at all. Um, Pretty much from the first drive I did with FSD 14.1.3 on Tuesday morning. And then all of a sudden, that feature works every single time from within my garage um, since. And that seems to be the case also with dot four as well. So, um, you know, there's some good, some bad, obviously, with this release. I'm sure they were trying to address a specific problem. Hopefully it was that brake pumping issue. And like I said before, if they're able to resolve that. Um, and that's it. the only thing this build does, it's still progress. So we'll have to keep an eye on that serving behavior. If that becomes more common, I think that could be a challenge. Um, and we'll just have to kind of see how it shakes out the rest of the week with the rest of our drives. So got a lot more in store for you guys tomorrow and I hope you watch and uh, stay tuned. Thanks.